I think a Lithuanian composer, he recorded his cat playing the piano. So it looks like some other people might have seen this one too. So the cat is like playing the keyboard of the piano and sometimes leaning its entire head on the keyboard of the piano and sometimes playing with the right paw, sometimes playing with the left, sometimes playing with its face, sometimes producing harmonious sounds, sometimes producing this kind of dissonant, disharmonious sounds. And the composer took this cat video and audio and created symphonic accompaniment for it and played it for an audience, and the cat got a standing ovation. <laughs> and so this is just to tell you, the, the, the teachings shared through the master teacher known as Jesus, Jesus says, those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them see. So that composer was able to hear the dynamic symphony that was emerging out of the ordinary out of the funny, the playful, the cat playing these keys on the piano, and was able to hear the layers of music around that. And so for each of us, we are invited to listen and to be able to hear the absolutely extraordinary beauty and presence of the divine right in the midst of ordinary life, right in the midst of whatever we encounter is the extraordinary presence of the divine. This is part of our series on instant self-enlightenment, and today's topic specifically is living light. We're connecting with the realization that within each of us is what the Bhagavad Gita terms transcendent, changeless light. And so this is the light that pre-exists our arrival in time and space. It is the light that is here in this human body. And so we're inviting ourselves to remember that from the perspective of the yogis, this physical vehicle that we are in, it's a vehicle, it's an instrument. So light is our true nature and our eternal awareness and identity using this vehicle to navigate time and space. And so the yogis say something like this, it is miraculous to be here in this particular body. It's an incredible gift to be here in this particular body. Be here fully every single moment that we can possibly be here. Live fully, love fully, be fully present to the wonders of what it's like to walk barefoot in the grass, to feel the sunshine on your face, to feel the breeze blow across your skin, to smile at a baby, to kiss the top of a young child's head, to allow yourself to greet all of life with respect, with love, with awareness. And also remember that this vehicle is temporary. It is an instrument that Radiance is using to navigate time and space. And so we don't need to identify ourselves with any pain that our body has ever gone through. We don't need to identify ourselves with any shame that we have ever encountered from a human perspective. We don't need to identify ourselves with any feeling of heaviness or weight or resistance or resentment or opprobrium or mockery or judgment. We can invite the light in. So no matter what we experience in time and space, we're inviting ourselves to simply open and invite the light in. And what happens then is our vision transforms so that it becomes possible to inwardly always be aware of what the yogis call the light of soul. The light of soul is with each being always. It is very quiet. And so if you're hearing a lot of noise, if you're hearing a lot of distraction, that's something other than the light of soul within. And that's an invitation to just notice, I'm feeling a lot of chaos, I'm feeling a lot of confusion, I'm feeling a lot of noise inwardly. It doesn't actually come from the world. Once we are in contact with quiet within ourselves, 
we will be able to be present with whatever we're encountering in the world. And I'm smiling. I saw, I'm about to share um, a funny animal video story, <laughs> which I saw maybe just yesterday. It's, um, I think, a Lithuanian composer. He recorded his cat playing the piano. So it looks like some other people might have seen this one too. So the cat is like playing the keyboard of the piano and sometimes leaning its entire head on the keyboard of the piano, and sometimes playing with the right paw, sometimes playing with the left, sometimes playing with its face, sometimes producing harmonious sounds, sometimes producing this kind of dissonant, disharmonious sounds. And the composer took this cat video and audio and created symphonic accompaniment for it and played it for an audience, and the cat got a standing ovation. <laughs> and so this is just to tell you, the, the, the teachings shared through the master teacher known as Jesus, Jesus says, those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them see. So that composer was able to hear the dynamic symphony that was emerging out of the ordinary out of the funny, the playful, the cat playing these keys on the piano, and was able to hear the layers of music around that. And so for each of us, we are invited to listen and to be able to hear the absolutely extraordinary beauty and presence of the divine right in the midst of ordinary life, right in the midst of whatever we encounter, is the extraordinary presence of the divine. When we realize that, what we're enjoying is what my teacher, Swami Shankarananda, who founded this meditation community, calls instant self-enlightenment. And so I'm about to share a teaching from Swami Shankarananda. He says, everything that is before you is the opportunity to experience instant self-enlightenment. Then you are living self-realization and only then. And so the example that I just gave is right in the midst of the ordinary, that Lithuanian composer hearing his cats playing the piano heard music. The ordinary is extraordinary. The divine is already present. The potential to experience instant self-enlightenment is already right there. And so we are expanding our awareness so that we directly experience self-enlightenment right where we are. And so again, just remember, everything that is before you is the opportunity to experience instant self-enlightenment. Anything in our experience, anything that we become aware of, and also anything that we have experienced from the past. So I'm going to share some scriptures, and we'll be talking about the way Jesus demonstrates the ongoingness of all. So after we leave the physical, we don't end. Our life continues. So I am Acharya Akashi, a spiritual teacher and a student of Swami Nityananda at Awake Yoga Meditation. If you love being inspired, uplifted, encouraged, and on fire for inner transformation, like, subscribe, and follow. And the teachings embodied by Jesus make that visible. From the perspective of the yogic tradition, this is not a one-time event. It doesn't only happen in the life of this extraordinary teacher, Jesus. It happens for all of us. Every time we open and allow the light to be fully present, we're in contact with that in each of us, which is ongoing. The lilies, which we meditated on at the opening, are also making visible the ongoing love, the ongoing wisdom, the ongoing support, the ongoing presence of our ancestors. And so I'm inviting each of us to connect, if you like, connect with the love and the strength the wisdom and the support that comes to you through your male line of descent. And that love and wisdom and strength and wisdom and support is there whether or not you knew your biological dad. That love, wisdom, strength, and support is always there for you. And so too, I invite each of us to connect with the love, the wisdom, the strength, and support that comes through our female line, through our mother's line. 
And also, if you like, to connect with the love and the strength, the wisdom and the support that comes through your spiritual ancestors. So any tradition that you come from, that you like to connect with, connect with that love and wisdom, that strength and that support. So I'm about to share some teachings. One of the ways to read what Jesus demonstrates is that Jesus is dying to the illusion of separateness. So in John, and this is from chapter 12, Jesus says this, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And so we're each invited to let go of anywhere that we've been holding around ourselves, that hard shell of separateness. So this is any feeling of being cut off, any feeling of isolation, any feeling of pain or shame or blame or division. We're inviting ourselves to offer that into the light, letting go of that sense of separateness. And again, I'll just say this, the teaching that Jesus is making visible from the perspective of the yogic tradition is simply an invitation for every human to realize non-separateness and to realize that we are far more than our human stories. Our human stories are beautiful and they are amazing, but they don't limit us and we need not identify with any painful aspect of what we have experienced. And so in Psalm 30, the psalmist sings, Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. And this is what each of us is invited to do. If there's any way, Swami Shankarananda said, I am the resurrection unto myself. So if there's any way in which I have been holding myself in the realm of the dead, I am willing to allow that to go. And I am willing to allow the light within me to bring me up from the realm of the dead. I am willing to lift up into the light fully. So another way to put this is, Swami Shankarananda said, you don't get the resurrection without the crucifixion. And so is there any way in which I am being the crucifixion unto myself? Is there any way in which I am tormenting myself by reliving whatever the shame or the blame or the pain or the betrayal is? And if so, it's a simple reminder I am the resurrection unto myself. I may let that go. I may keep the wisdom and let go of all of the rest. So I'll share Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. There's a passage in Luke chapter 24 which is very similar. And one of the things that comes across in Luke chapter 24 is that when the women go and share this story, they're not believed. <laughs> and so the passage here is, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. 
And so for each of us, I'm inviting us to meditate on the spiritual invitation that these teachings make possible and make present and available. Premidas, in his reflection, shared the metaphor of the boulder. And the boulder in this story is present. So the boulder is there if we are keeping ourselves in the tomb. And the invitation is to allow the boulder to be rolled away from the tomb. And the invitation is that this happens not only once, but many times in the course of a human lifetime. Any way in which I have been confining myself to the tomb and allowing that boulder to block me from the pouring forth of light through me, I take responsibility. I turn to the light and I allow the light to roll the boulder away from the tomb. And what happens then is a universal teaching of truth. The tomb becomes revealed as a womb. If we allow ourselves to work with it in this way, there's always something that is emerging beyond whatever apparent ending we are experiencing. So allow the boulder to roll away, allow the light to pour forth, and notice that the light is always going to pour forth in unprecedented ways, in ways that the human mind is not quite able to comprehend. And so in both of these teachings right here, the guards shake with fear. They're so afraid of these beings of light that have helped roll this boulder away from the tomb. And what Jesus says is, don't be afraid. It's the same message that the angel gives to the women do not be afraid. And so for each of us then, the invitation is, it's very basic and very simple, but it also transforms all of life. What happens if I free myself from fear? What remains if I utterly let go of fear? If I allow fear to leave my body, how does my body feel? And what remains? If I allow fear to leave my heart, how does my heart feel? And what remains? If I allow fear to leave my mind, how does my mind feel? And what remains? If I allow fear to leave my life, how does my life feel and what remains? And if you like one of the ways that Swami Shankarananda puts this that makes me smile, he says, what feels better than fear? <laughs> so just to ask yourself that question, it's like a shortcut makes me burst out laughing. What feels better than fear? And so I'm going to start to put some names to it, but I invite you to ask within yourself, what feels better than fear? When fear is gone, what remains is peace. What remains is the awareness that this is what this story is making visible. In the end, the light triumphs. In the end, no matter what you have gone through humanly, the light triumphs. In the end, love is stronger than denial and betrayal. In the end, connection and caring and kindness and compassion and awareness and forgiveness are stronger than opprobrium and mockery and hatred and anger. In the end, healing is stronger than anguish. That is what the story makes visible. It also makes visible that from a human perspective, every human can experience anguish deeper than anguish is unconditional love. And that is what Jesus demonstrates. And so I'm just going to ask this as a question. What concepts do you have about self-mastery? The story of Jesus demonstrates self-mastery. And what it tells you is this. Self-mastery is not about controlling another human. It is not about manipulating another human. It is not about changing outer conditions. 
It is about knowing that even if my human self is feeling anguish in the garden and my sweat is falling like drops of blood, deeper than that is divine love and wisdom. Deeper than that is the goodness of what the divine is revealing that is even deeper than the anguish, that is even deeper than the human reluctance and the pain that the human is experiencing, deeper than all of it. Look back on your life. Deeper than any anguish you have experienced is spiritual good. Deeper than any pain or shame or betrayal or fear or anguish that you have experienced is unconditional love. Deeper than any death or ending that you have experienced, any tomb, any boulder that you have experienced is the divine can roll the boulder away from the tomb and the light can pour forth. And so what Jesus demonstrates is that self-mastery is about thy will be done. And it is about demonstrating that no matter what, even if each of us is facing incredibly challenging circumstances, forgiveness triumphs. Love is stronger. Eternal life and light are what is real. They are what is true. They are what is pure. They are what is vital. They are what lasts. So for each of us, Jesus demonstrates that the self, the yogis talk about the self with a capital S. You could also refer to this as the light within you. The light within you is free, always no matter what you are encountering in time and space. And so the pairs of opposites are fully operative in the story of Jesus. There is triumph. The crowds are shouting praise last week. And then there is hatred and blame and mockery and shame this week. The crowds are turning around and shouting that. The yogis say, master yourself in the midst of all of it. In the midst of praise, master yourself. Be that steady, still, quiet. And that, in turn, will allow you, if hatred is being directed at you, to master yourself. Jesus knows he's not touched by any of it. He's not touched by the praise, and he's not touched by the opprobrium and the shame that comes his way. So he has identified his own ongoingness beyond the body. And that is what each of us is invited to live while we are still in the body. If we know, directly know, our own ongoingness while we are still in the body, we live in freedom. And when we live in freedom, what happens is our hearts are always open. The light simply shines. The light simply shares. And it is the vast light. It is not the light of the separate individual self. It is the vast light. The light that moves the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets. Open your heart and allow that light to shine through you. Allow that light to help you know the self is free. The self is beautiful. The self is perfect. The self is transcendental and changeless. And so the self is able to joyfully, wisely, respectfully, with awareness and kindness, generosity and gladness, with good humor, with self-mastery, to navigate any human experience. And notice what you feel then. It's not fear. It's love. It's trust. It's joy. It's magnificence, it's magic. It is opening to the energy of divine miracles. Every spring is a divine miracle. Every breath that we breathe is a divine miracle. Every time we are able to forgive and let go and move forward, it's a divine miracle. Every time we remember and live that deeper than any anguish is spiritual good. Every time we remember that in the end, light triumphs, we are living truth. We are living reality. 
We are living light. Thank God and God bless us all. <laughs>